Well, my name's Vernon Subs. You I have this question to What is something valuable that you have contributed that you would like to share with us? And when thinking about the work you have done in your life thus far, what are you proud of? And what can you point to? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my work with uh, with, with the non-profit. I've worked with quite a few ever since and been a part of ever since I was a child from the age of nine. And, and I'm very proud of that, even as a drummer at the new thing. Uh, even when I uh, contributed to the writer's workshop, I mean, um, as, as a team member for the humanities project, the humanities truck. I'm very, and, and as a, but most of all, my work in the ministry that I'm in at my church, being brought up in, in the Baptist church. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's what I'm most proud of. Is there anything in particular, one specific event that occurred or accomplishment that you're most proud of and that you remember the most? Yes, I remember playing drums, congos for the for the African heritage dancers and drummers, which were one of the workshops created at the New Thing Art and Architecture Center back in the 70s and the 80s, and I became one of the members of the dance and drum troupe. Yeah. And we traveled all over the country performing uh, African heritage, you know, programs and uh, be, being a part of most of your colleges in the, uh, you know, their cultural program. What was the impact of that? How did people perceive you? Well, it was, it was amazing, I believe. I mean, they always welcomed us. They didn't want us to leave because after every performance, the bus would be waiting. And they, they wanted us always to come back <laughs> right away because it's a lot of things about the, the African culture that they didn't know about. And, and they didn't know how important drums were and music is to to people, to humanity, especially African people who use drums at one point as a form of primary form of communication. What were some of the places that you were in particular Harvard. Harvard was most memorable because of the, the food. They gave us good food. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That was one of the highlights because I'd never experienced the quality of, of life that I saw the students living and the way they treated us with royalty and open arms. It, it, uh, even as a child, my perception of Ivy League schools and, and, you know, of course, people that went there, because a whole lot of people of my color didn't go to Harvard. Yeah, that's great. But the founder of the new thing, Topper Karu, he graduated from Harvard or, or Yale, yeah, one of the two. I'm, I think it was Harvard, pretty sure. And he, he got the door open for that program. and uh, But I'm most proud of that. And also being a part of history because the Smithsonian, a lot, a lot of our work and performances uh, 
even our reunions uh, in the archives of the Smithsonian. Yeah. And from that, I became a, uh, one of the original African herd, I mean, Skip Mahoney and the Cash, or something. It's an RB group. Yes, I recall. Yes. I was one of the original percussionists. So do you have recordings of your work? Are they available? Well, a lot of the a lot of the records that I did work on and I played during the time like like the album, Your Funny Moves. That's still you can still buy it in the stores. It's still it's still very popular popular, semi popular in the music because that era they're trying to at one point, they tried to make a comeback with r and the in the groups of that, but 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 then COVID came because they were coming. They're coming back. Certain age group of people they like the OJs. They like uh, Blue Mag. They like Ashford. You know things. Like that. Well, let me ask you: When you were at Harvard and other places, where was your audience majority white? Of course. Where well, they had, I mean, it was, it wasn't fully, I don't know if you could ever say Harvard was, was, was full, is fully integrated. No, not at that time, but they had a small group as I remember. I mean, even now, will Harvard be integrated? No, no. but I'm just wondering, was there any interaction? Yes, with, there were, with there the were. students? Yeah, there were some minority students there. And they came when we performed, they were more more so at the forefront of the audience. But uh, you know, everybody appreciated and 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 they welcomed us, welcomed us because really they had they had never done that at Harvard. Up to that point. And I guess it's because Taba Karu graduated from the or at the time attended there or something like that. I'm not sure. I was a little kid. Uh, when you perform at HBC, how was that experience? Well, it was, it was a lot more interactive. Because, like I said, at the time, I was just maybe 10, 10, 10 to 15 years old. So, uh, but the older, the older uh, members of the group, the troop, they, they interacted, some of them, they even, they even met, met significant others there. I mean, going that, that whole experience, it was new and it ignited in me a uh, desire and aspiration to attend college, which was during, during the 70s and 80s for me, my, where I grew up at, and my family, because there were seven of us and my family. And we were very poor. We were considered the, the poor, one of the poorest black families in the DuPont Circle area. Uh, one. Go ahead. Yeah, you, you. Go ahead. Run down. Run down the list. You were getting ready, you started a list, money was one. I, I really want you to tell me your perception and your, how you felt and how you saw it, because it's what you The main thing, well, of course, poor money, food, clothing, assets. Um, access to education. I mean, there were seven of us, and my father, my namesake father, he was a construction worker, foreman for a construction company. So, and he, and there were seven of us. We, we always lived in public housing. 
pero como no me alcanzaba la plata para pagar la renta, ni para pagar el pollo que te debía como... It means que me había cruzado la frontera, entonces tenía an inspector que coming there every so often and, and you gotta clean up real good you know then, then more so than before you know it's a time to well back then they didn't care they just wanted to say they came and saw that you weren't turn the place up or it was still in one piece or they came and visited the family and the family was still there living and, and strapped, you know, strapped. Sure. Um, you are a, a man of faith. How did you come into that area? How did you well, when I was, wow, I had to be maybe four or five, and uh, my uncle, my brother, my mother's oldest brother, my uncle, James, he was a minister, he was a pastor, and he started his congregation in my mother's basement and I remember on Sundays I used to go my mother used to allow me to go down and sit in the service and I remember going and sitting and always sat in the first row and I say when I Something inside of me was calling me because I wanted to be like my uncle, but better because I I liked the way that he touched people. People listened to him, and and I believed because I began to read the, the Bible myself, and I began to learn how to pray. And, and I, I, I was getting results from praying, even at a young age, even though I didn't fully understand at the time. And then throughout my life, people would always tell me, there's something about you, you know, with people, with, you, have an, you have an anointing on your life. I know you have mentored a lot of people. Yes. Uh, on your own. Volunteer work and, and as a professional uh, consultancy. Can you talk about that? Um, on people's lives. Well, one of Sure, send them over. Well, thank you so much. You are so welcome. And you are, you are so pleasant. You're welcome.